Okay guys, this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to import a model into Unigen that has three materials over that model and each material is going to have three textures that represent how that material is displayed to the world. So on the bottom right, this is just some uh, random garble. If you want to do some research on your own, I highly recommend it. Um, I'm not uh, an expert on any of this. But I'm just trying to get you guys started. If this helps you, uh, I basically started from scratch myself. So here's some uh, things you can kind of look up or get an idea of. But basically on the left here, we have Blender. We have our model. I made this up beforehand. The only thing that it has done to it is it has three materials applied to it. We have our treading material, which is applied here. We have our ring material, which is applied here and we have our hub material which is applied here now each of these materials is going to have three textures that represent how that material looks in the world in here is where we have our textures now in the last video we only applied one texture which was our albedo in this first column these three textures are our three albedo textures in the second column these are what we call our normal textures and in the third column, these are our ambient occlusion textures. Now, each of these texture maps affects how your final material is going to look. Your albedo textures are just your base textures, your main color. Your normal textures are basically what give your texture some depth and a little bit of extra geometry. And your ambient occlusions are what give your texture a little extra lighting effects. Now, if you're having a hard time getting maps together or messing with textures, you can just do your base texture, and there's a lot of places online or software you can download that will generate normal maps for you. It's very easy, and you will have your base texture and a normal map, and those two texture maps alone will also allow you to do a lot of manipulating. So let's get started. We have our model. We have our three materials uh, applied. We're going to export it. Now real quick, um, keep an eye on these export settings. They have caused me a problem. They, by default, they're going to look like this. It will say all local for your apply scaling and your experimental apply transform will be deselected. Now what you want is scale to be 1. You want your apply setting to be FBX unit scale. Your forward is just the forward direction of your model in Blender. I am going to use the Y axis for that. Our up axis is our Z. Our apply unit is checked and we want to check mark this experimental apply transform. Now if you do not have these transform settings while exporting your model, you may have some issues adding physics to your model later down the line. So just make sure your scaling is proper. You don't want your model to get scaled when you import it. So we're going to export that to the desktop and we will drag it from the desktop into Unigen. Now, once we do that, we will also, just like Blender, when we had our export settings, Unigen is going to give us some import settings. We have our import mesh. That is just the actual object itself. Import materials. That is what generates that materials folder. That materials folder is going con to contain these three materials we created in Blender. Hub, ring, and treading. That is where all of our nine textures are going to be applied, is in those three materials. So importing back to that um, if you scroll down in other options you also have import textures import lights and import cameras like in the last video I recommended to remove the light and camera before exporting your model you can remove the light and camera here before you import it by deselecting these boxes if your model is already material and textured and ready to go um, and you're importing into Unigen you can select this import textures and import materials and your model will automatically be textured and materialized. In this video I'm essentially showing you an alternative and kinda how we can mess with things in Unigen itself. So our scales one, let's import this, let's get things going. Our models in Unigen, we're gonna drag that into the world and I'm gonna get a little closer view here. Now we have our model that has three materials over the surface of it. If we go into our materials folder we will see those three materials hub mat, ring dot mat, and treading dot mat. Now we're going to minimize blender 
open up our textures folder. I'm going to bring all these textures into our materials folder just so it's everything's in one place. It's easy to work with. Now I'm going to open up. I'm going to start by opening up my treading material. That is going to bring our parameters window open on the right here. And you want to have your textures tab selected. You'll see your albedo, your shading, and your normal. Now you're missing your box for your ambient occlusion. That is because you need to go and manually activate it. You click on the states tab and under options you'll see ambient occlusion. Check that and when you go back into textures you will have a, another box for your ambient occlusion texture. We're going to put our albedo in the first box, we're going to put our normal texture in the normal box, and we're going to put our ambient occlusion texture in the ambient occlusion box. This will complete our first material. Those three textures combined are going to give our first material its final look. So let's drag our three materials in there. We're going to start with our albedo. We drug that in. That gives us our base texture. Now we are going to drag, drag our normals in to our normals box. Now immediately that adds a lot of depth. You can see the texture is concaved. Um, and if I go to this side, you can actually see that it's a bit inflated. Um, that kind of has to do with your UVs and your normals. But basically what your normal texture is doing is giving your base texture some geometry, some depth, um, some height, however you have it set up. Now we're going to add our third texture, which is the ambient occlusion. We're going to drag that into the ambient occlusion box. You're not going to notice a huge change, but it is making a good amount of difference as far as how your model is reflecting light based off the other objects around it and all that. So we have our three textures applied to our first material. That material is done. We're going to go into our ring material, and you'll see our parameters open up on the side. It has no textures in it. We're going to bring our ring textures in. Our ring textures are just a carbon fiber texture like you'd see on a vehicle. So our carbon albedo, we're going to drag that in. Our carbon normal, we're going to bring that in. And in the states tab, we have to manually activate our ambient occlusion, go back into textures, and you can hit this refresh button if you have something there. It'll bring it back to default. And we're going to drag our carbon fiber ambient occlusion texture, our final one, into here. Now our second material is completed. It has three textures that are defining how it portrays itself in the world. We are going to select in our asset browser our third material, our hub.mat, which will open our final materials parameters on the side here, and we are going to drag the corresponding textures into that material. So we'll bring our metal albedo texture, we will bring our metal normals texture, and in states tab again we will activate our ambient occlusion and now we have a section for our ambient occlusion texture so we will bring that in as well and we are complete your model is in Unigen it has three materials and each material has three textures defining how it appears to the world and other players now before we end this if you see in your textures tab there's a parameters tab to the right this lets you fine tune your texture, your materials. So we're going to select this yellow material here, and I'm going to tweak with that one a little bit, just to give you an idea of what you can do with your normal maps, your ambient occlusion maps, and it's it's it makes a huge difference. You really can do just about anything you want. You just have to do a bit of research on how these textures are affecting your material. So you'll see in this parameters tab we have a metalness slider, a roughness slider and a normal intensity slider. I recommend sticking with these three sliders if you don't know what's going on. They will give you a lot of variation in your material. So starting with the metalness slider, that is slid all the way up. That means that our material is going to look very metal-like. It's going to look like a metal object. If we slide that down, it's going to get very dull. It's not going to reflect as much light and it's going to look similar to a plastic. That is the metalness slider. We are going to keep our metal in a slider up in this instance. And now if we move on to our roughness slider, you can see if we bring our roughness all the way up, it doesn't reflect much light at all anymore. It doesn't have those white highlights from the sun on our model. And that is because essentially it is a metal object, according to our first slider, that is very, very rough.
what that would represent in the real world is basically a vehicle that doesn't have a glossy painted finish on it. If the vehicle has like a flat matte finish paint job, that's essentially what you're representing here. This texture is being represented as a metal that has a rough surface. It essentially represents a painted metal. So if I bring this roughness down a bit, I can get it to look more like a good painted gold. It almost a semi-gloss gold and if I bring our roughness all the way down it's gonna make our metal extremely smooth it's gonna be like a polished metal surface and it's gonna reflect a ton of light the reason it looks green is because it's reflecting the green floor of this room off of the texture faces that is how polished and smooth the surface is being represented as so you can see how much of a difference um, these sliders can make. Now if you go to your normal intensity slider that is that texture that gives your model depth. If I bring that all the way down you'll notice our texture no longer has depth to it. If I drag it back up you'll notice we'll start getting some depth added into our texture. Now your model itself does not change shape. The texture is imitating a um, new geometry. It's basically faking a raised surface or a lower surface, surface, but it looks good regardless. And that's basically that. You're pretty much done. So you have your model in Unigen, you have three materials applied to that model, and you have three separate textures that define how those materials look in the real world. If I run the simulator up here, I can simulate the game while I'm editing it here. and it doesn't have any physics. I'm going to add physics really quick and show you that as well. I'm going to desimulate the world. I'm going to select my object in the top right in your parameters tab. You'll be in your nodes tab. You want to be in the physics tab. Under body, there's going to be a drop down box. Select rigid. You want to create a rigid body for this model. And now under shapes, you will have a drop down box. You can select an object. I'm going to select sphere because my model represents a sphere. If you have an oddly shaped model, you can pick convex. It will make a collision box based off your model. That's pretty much what you're doing here is creating a collision body. Now that we have our shape defined, we're going to add a collision body. You see the white lines basically indicate we've added a collision body to our model. Now, that's all you need to do to add physics. If we go and run the simulation to start and save, you'll see it drops to the ground like everything else. It now has physics applied to it. It has a collision body. If we run the game, <coughs> we can go inside because Unigen has the first person controller by default. Um, we can actually interact with this model. And you can see the lighting, how it affects it, and it looks much, much nicer than, for example, the first video where we only applied one material and one, ma one texture to the object, similar to how these plain colored boxes are. But these actually do have a bit more um, textures. So anyways, that's how you get that going. Um, if you try and add physics and your model ends up disappearing when you run the world or anything like that or try and simulate the physics while you're editing it and your model just disappears, that's because your scaling is not set right and it's scaling your model down a hundred times and it's making it so tiny that you can't see it in game. That's an issue I had. So if you apply physics to your model and you run the game and your model disappears, don't worry. It's because your model's getting scaled on import, export. Just check your settings and look back through the video. Alright guys, we'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna try on the next one I want to get into a little bit of programming. We will actually add some um, physics controllers to this model so we can control it without actually having to run into it. And I'll try and get into materials and textures a bit more. And then give me ideas if you guys want to know how to do something. If I don't know how to do it, I'll, I'll figure it out and I will put a video up about it and we'll I'll try and learn it together. So we'll see you on the next one.